We continue to look ahead to the 2024 football season. Our stop today is Bourbonnet, Illinois, where we get to visit with the new head football coach for the Olivet Nazarene Tigers, Coach Avant Mitchell. Coach, it's a privilege to get to visit with you today, first off. And you were named as the new head football coach in mid-January of 2024. So congratulations on that appointment. And tell us a little bit about your new gig. Uh, thank you, Joey. I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, this is a great program that you have here. I've watched quite a few of your interviews over the years, so thank honored you. to be on with you today. So um, my start here at Olivet has been amazing. The people here are phenomenal. Um, the support is great. Uh, resources, facilities, things of that nature. Um, it, it's it's excellent. You know, we truly believe in you know you're being excellent on and off the field, and I've witnessed that and experienced that thus far. So I'm excited to be here. Well, again, congratulations. And by the way, thank you for the kind words. I, I appreciate that as well. Spring football time has come and now gone. You finished up on April 20th. Tell us a little bit about the spring. Yes, the spring was um, somewhat unique. New staff coming in, a lot of transition going on for our, for our program and establishing and um, kind of interjecting our foundation of our culture within the program and getting to know the young man within our program. So it was been a very good time this this past spring. I think we came out of spring very successfully. Um, minimal injuries there, and we were able to kind of implement and install the basic foundation of our schemes, techniques, philosophies, things of that nature. So it was very successful. Well, you have a number of years of coaching experience that you definitely bring to the table in that. So uh, I, I'm sure you want to get things going your way. I want to ask about that again in, in a moment, but. Uh, you look back at the spring and, you know, you you have the roster that you've inherited. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, getting there mid-January, it's tough to get to recruit that much, at least for the 2024 season. Uh, were there any players that that have stood out during spring practices? Any, anybody that, that uh, comes to the top of your mind? Oh, absolutely. Quite a few names there. We, we have a hard-working group of young men uh, from a defensive standpoint. I can – Think about John Harmon, one of our top linebackers. He had a phenomenal spring. I mean, he's just like a Tasmanian devil. He's all over the place. I mean, he's hit, hitting anything, moving like a heat-seeking missile. He's done very well for us. Um, Kyle Taylor, we call him KT, one of our defensive backs, had a, had a very good spring as well. Uh, we had um, a few other guys defensively from D-line throughout. Uh, they really fought and, and made a lot of plays offensively. Blake Lamb, our all-conference tight end, Evan Leak, all-conference running back. Um, they did well also. Receivers stepped up to the plate, and our offensive line did a very good job also. So they had quite a few names you know, spread throughout the team that stood out. They were very high points across the board. So we're expecting a lot of those guys coming into the um, fall. You know, I, I think sometimes the offensive line doesn't get the recognition. Most times the offensive line doesn't get the recognition. And, and usually when, when you think about the line during a game, it's because the whistle's been blown when you didn't want it to get blown. But talk about then that offensive line and, and, and how big is it to, to come into a program and be able to say, yeah, we've got some, some pieces in place already. Yep. Um, it's huge. It's huge to um, have an established offensive line, guys who have gotten some um, significant reps over the years and guys who are eager to kind of set their tone because we've had um, past and we had, you know, I think, the offensive lineman of the year in our conference, and we had all-conference, all-American all, all caliber linemen. They, they kind of play with and behind, so now it's their time to, to shine. So JT Price is one that stands out to me. Um, he had, had a very, very strong spring, and, you know, we're, we're looking forward to kind of lean on him a little bit there uh, along with others. So they did a great job acclimating and learning our new system. Uh, so that, that's been a blessing. I, I wanted to ask about offense too, Coach, and I'm glad you gave me that segue there to to give you an opportunity to talk about that a little bit. I, I'd, I'd like to know for ONU fans then, uh, what what kind of offense would they be looking at? Again, without giving away state secrets, but uh, what kind of offense might they be looking at? And uh, do you adapt to the the personnel? Or, or I guess at this point, you're, you're having an opportunity to – bring in your system that you want and let them learn it. Talk a little bit about the, both of those. Yes. So um, to, I guess a little bit of both. We definitely, as, as all coaches, you have things that you're comfortable with that you learned over the years, you've implemented and installed. So that's going to kind of be like a, a ground zero level implementation. But at the same time, I feel that it's about the Jimmy's and Joe's. 
So if you've got a system that does not match what you do, you need to be able to adapt to the players that you have on your roster. Um, from a, we're, we're blessed to have a roster that kind of, there's a good marriage there on the things that we would like to do and we've done in the past. And as we move forward and, you know, implement and tweak a few things so that we can um, kind of marry the two on what they're comfortable with, what we can be, what they've been successful with in the past. And then the things that we've had success with bringing those two together and uh, making the best plan there. So we'll, you know, we'll be 11 personnel offense. We love our tight ends within our offense. Um, it's going to be a zone schemed offense, a lot of RPO within that spread offense also, but we will be a very physical and dominant offense. That's our mission right there. You know, we can't win anything without the trenches. So um, we definitely honor and, and love our own line. I like the, I like that. I'm sure. And I'm sure anyone who is a fan of Olivet Nazarene would like to hear it's going to be a dominant offense. So that, that that's fun to hear. We're on Midwest Sports Net now here on the summit and talking about the 2024 season with Avant Mitchell, who is the new head coach for Olivet Nazarene. Three years, or excuse me, three months now in the books, but still heading for your first season on the field. Uh, coach, I would ask you then, Coach Heyman was there. I had a chance to visit with him a couple of years ago when uh, Owen you was in the Victory Bowl. And then Coach Conway came back and it was quick transition last year and now you're there. So uh, you're looking at three coaches in a three-year span. Uh, talk about what goes into now looking to build some consistency. I, I know culture is big, but but how do you start to implement that? It's a great question, Joey. I think that the biggest thing for consistency and continuity and trust, you know, uh, we have a few um, elements within our culture, within our program that we kind of, you know, drive home on a regular basis. One are our three pillars, and it's um, trust, love, and compete. And that's something that we had to do immediately. So like coming into the program within my first two weeks of being on campus, I met with every every person affiliated with our program. So all players, um, training staff, um, man, student managers, you know, coaches, everyone, you know, of course, those ancillary individuals within the athletic department as well. But I think it's very key that you establish that level of trust that, you know, this is not a microwave move. This is not a, a pit stop. Uh, this, this is a destination job here. I, I think it's a phenomenal school. It's a school that I've had my eyes on actually um, for a few years now, not necessarily to step in as a head coach, but um, there are some connections that I've had. And I can remember back when Coach Heyman received the job. I think that was um, winter of 2015. I was on campus January 2016 for an interview to be the defensive coordinator at that time. At that time, for my family and I, the um, time didn't align. But here we are full circle how God kind of puts things and orchestrates things. I'm blessed to be here now and, and serving this new capacity. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I – Appreciate what you're doing. You you are just setting me up very well. You even answered a question that I hadn't asked yet. So I, I it was one I was thinking of earlier today. At, you know about looking at what caught your attention with ONU. So I, I appreciate that. Well, let's stay there then for just a moment longer, because the the motto of the school, education with a Christian purpose, uh, I think that should speak for itself. But I, I like the way on the the website for Olivet Nazarene it says, "We believe." Period. You belong here, period. Kind of a double meaning. You put those things together, but they stand alone as well. So talk a little bit about uh, the university and uh, the football program within the university. Yes, Joey, that's a great point. A great segue as well. I can tell you this, that the education with a Christian purpose, that's huge to me. You know, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. That's my firm foundation. Uh, far from a perfect man, but you know I love the Lord, and to be have an opportunity to come to work every day and just kind of feel God's presence with your coworkers, the atmosphere, the culture of the university that's been put in place. It was a great fit for me. I had a few different opportunities in this off season, um, positions and, and the jobs that were extended and put towards me. But once I stepped foot back on campus here at Olivet, I knew it was home. And uh, that takes me to, you know, your next point of we believe you belong here. You know, you have uh, organizations, you know, universities, institutions have slogans and models, things of that nature. But I can attest personally that that statement there, we believe you belong here. The university is very intentional on letting people feel that. Uh, when they're being recruited or they're, or the, that individual, be it a prospective student, so an athlete, whatever the case may be, is um, exploring the potential of Olivet Nazarene University. 
it's on the forefront. I mean, every person on campus has a kind smile, you know, going to say hello to you and you know, extend themselves trying to help and and be what God calls us to be, I believe. So um, that's a huge, huge statement for me. I can tell you this. I was immensely impressed. Our first, we have purple and gold days. These are our big admissions department um, um, visit days for students yeah. to come out. And they're, 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 but the level of excellence that this visit day was set up when I've been, as you said, I've been around for to, to a few places and I've been around for a while now. So I've seen a lot of admissions events, so on, you know, things of that nature and nothing against previous places I've been, but I've never been to a university who does it quite like Olivet does it. I mean, they truly make each person who's on campus feel like we believe you belong here. So I was impressed by that and blessed to be a part of it now. That's that's fantastic to hear. And I know that you will represent well also. By the way, that wasn't an old joke that you've been around for a little while. That's that's not <laughs> at all. Although we apparently do have the same hairstylist. So, you know, you <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I listen, we are right now. We're at the end of April when we're recording this. And so, I mean, almost to the to the day, four months from opening day, the the season kicks off on the road in Michigan. You go back to Michigan to get the, the season kicked off in Ann Arbor, taking on Concordia. And then first home game for the Tigers with you at the helm will be on Saturday, September 7th, the next weekend, taking on Taylor. Have you looked ahead any at all? So um, I think that Yes, I mean, of course, you're, you're constant preparation mode. I mean, spring was all about us as we kind of kind of themed our spring. You know, we broke it down on us at times. And, and you know, our mission was to implement who we are and kind of kind of set those fibers in place. But, and, you know, our final spring um, on the field all up, we kind of talked about that transition mode now, now that we're moving into the summer months and, you know, post spring ball time where we are now, of course, pre um, preparing ourselves, our bodies, our minds to get ready to compete against other programs like that as we move into the season and going into week one, I mean, we've got a juggernaut and we play what I believe the Miss States Football Association in my personal opinion, my humble opinion is the best conference in the United States of America with an NAI. I mean, it is a, a very dominant conference. I mean, year in, year out, it's easy to see anywhere between five and seven or possibly eight teams in the top 25 in the country. So it's a very, very stout conference. And Concordia is a very formidable foe. They've had a lot of success over the years. I was blessed to be a part of that program years ago and they're around their inception um, time of the program there and to see where they've come from and see where they are now. I mean, I tip my hat off to Coach Shoemaker and um, the rest of the program there, Lonnie Priest, AD there. They've done some phenomenal, some phenomenal things there. So we look forward to sharing the field with them on August 31st. And, yes, it will be cool to come back to Michigan, come back to my home state and where I most recently coached at as well. So it'll be a fun outing. Looking forward to that. And we just know the things we need to do to prepare, you know, for that game. Kind of looking at this game, the last two seasons, if I'm not mistaken, I think both games were a one-score loss for Olivet versus Concordia. So um, we got to try to find a way to kind of get on the other side of that. And then um, on September the 7th, our first, our home opener, we play Taylor University, another university that I've been blessed to be a part of that program as well. So a lot of respect for both schools. Coach Mingo is a great coach as well, a great friend of mine now. We've, we've kind of um, kindled a, a very, very strong relationship over the last few years um, from him coming into the, um, the conference as well. And he's got a great program there. So, again, we have two tough um, opening games, weeks one and two. We are excited. Our, week, our game versus Taylor University will be uh, – we're going to start a new tradition here. It will be our whiteout game. It'll be a night game where we will wear all white and hope we can get the community out to kind of support us. We're going to need all the support we can get because it's going to be a very tough outing as well. So looking forward to it. Have not looked far into the season from there. I mean, I know who we play, but, you know, it's, of course, it's one, it's one step at a time when we get a time. I understand. Well, we'll we'll try to help you promote for whiteout then okay. and, and let that be a, a good traditional start. Coach Avant Mitchell, Olivet Nazarene in his first season with the program. And I believe, sir, representing well there at the folks in, in Bourbonnet that uh, not only are you going to do a good job, you're already doing a great job. So thank you very much for taking time with us today. And we will follow the Tigers, of course, through this season. And, and uh, we look forward to when it gets underway. Thanks again for being with us today on the summit. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Joy. Have a blessed day.